Now let's jump to the last stage, which is the grunge stage. The grunge stage, we will have the following agenda with Alejandro Melendez, senior performer, who will talk about pipeline, pipeline performance. Uh, we will have next a Garonka Bierov, who will talk about capacity planning for a private cloud. And last, we will have Mark Tlemcen, that will shout at the server. All right, so uh, let's make the uh, room and the, uh, the stage available for uh, Senor Performo. So uh, Senor Performo has been with us since the beginning uh, of the PAC. He was not part of the in the Scotland Castle, but he was uh, on all of our other uh, events. Uh, so uh, we we were together in Chamonix. That was uh, amazing. Um, and last year, uh, if you didn't have the chance to see uh, Alejandro's presentation for Jurassic Park, you have definitely have to see it. It was amazing. Uh, one of the last uh, speaking slots of the conference. Even if you were tired, uh, he was able to entertain us until the end of the show. So that was great. So uh, without waiting anymore, I'd like to uh, call uh, Mr. Senor Performo on stage so he could, uh, um, yeah make our dreams came, come true about performance, uh, make uh, us uh, uh, feel that performance is important for anyone, uh, and that pipelining, uh, make building pipeline with performance is obviously very simple. So, without any waiting, I'll let you rock on stage, Mr. Senor Performo. Hey, hello, amigo Hendrik. Hello, everybody. I hope you all can hear me well that everything looks fine. Uh, Henrik, please note and confirm <laughs> if it, that's yeah. the case. There's a small Excellent. latency on the voice. There's a small latency on the voice, but uh, it's, it's fine. We can hear you very well. Okay. Uh, testing. Okay. Well, no, hopefully it's not too annoying or disturbing during the presentation. And uh, thank you for having me. Welcome, everybody. If um, I can, I will uh, bring it up and start presenting. So welcome today to this little presentation that I have uh, prepared as uh, usual. We're going to be talking about performance testing, but on this uh, occasion, I want to talk to you about uh, pipelines. Uh, how do they integrate with performance testing? How can we um, deal with them? Why are they important? What are them? Many uh, people and organizations do not know uh, what to deal with them. So let's figure that out. Let's um, find what's the deal with these pipeline, uh, pipelines. Pipelines. It's an interesting pronunciation. Um, but before anything, I want to thank my uh, Neoris amigos that uh, keep allowing me to come and share the knowledge here with you about um, any topic of performance with uh, these funny examples and to bring some music and rock uh, with everyone on this occasion. Sadly, I was not on the first PAC, but I have been uh, gladly invited after the first one to all of them. I am happy to keep coming. And um, it's such a pleasure. Thank you, amigos. But for the ones that probably do not know me, let's do a quick introduction. I am Leandro, Leandro Melendez, a rock performer. I am a performance testing manager at the company Qualitas Group, where we provide uh, performance testing services to multiple organizations. Um, I have been on IT a little over 20 years. It's been a long journey so far. And uh, specifically in performance, a little over 10 years. I think it's close to 12 by now. So it has been a while, a big um, route. I'm also known, as uh, Henrik mentioned, in the internet as Senor Performo. And that's because I started a blog at uh, www.srperf.com, where I um, gathered this uh, moniker, this uh, pseudonym to be known as. Eventually, I um, came out and uh, showed up my secret identity a la Iron Man. I am uh, Senor Performo. Uh, I, ha I am as well. You can reach me on all the social networks, most of them at uh, similar, S-R-P-E-R-F. 
a, a senior perf. And um, in between other things that I do, I am the host of the Perf Bites in Espanol, the Spanish version of the Perf Bites show. And um, recently, I have become a YouTuber. I have been pr uh, producing YouTube videos where I try to explain also some of these uh, performance testing topics. And um, last but not least, I do public speaking. Well, not so public lately, but um, online speaking. Uh, hopefully, that is going to change soon. Um, so, enough for me. Moving on, let's see what are we going to be talking about today. As I mentioned, first, I'm going to try to define a little bit what is this pipelining situation that um, we're going to be talking about. Then, why are they needed? Like, what's the reason for them? And um, second, why and how do they interact with performance testing? To finish, uh, I'm going to give you some recommendations, some how-tos and ways in which you can uh, enable these pipelines in or performance testing into these pipelines. Uh, but first, we need to kind of define them, right? Let's let's start rocking this topic and um, figuring out what are them because many individuals and organizations do not know; uh, they are not used to. So pipelines. Um, in real life, they are just tubes, these um, whole, um, hollow um, structures that allow you to send something and to leave it flowing um, perpetually until it reaches the, its destination. Most of the time it's in the sea when we want to get rid of stuff or uh, they bring water, fresh water for us to use. So those are the pipelines in real life, tubes that keep things flowing from the origin until our destination. In IT, uh, they are very uh, similar. Um, they are more or less some stages or flows uh, while we complete lots of processes. As we saw on the physical pipelines, they uh, go through spots, they turn around, they um, process it, increase the flow, decrease the flow. They do multiple things, even get filtered. There are many things that happen through a physical pipeline, and as well, um, they happen through a um, real uh, pipeline. I'm just noticing, um, guys, I think my presentation is not changing. Am I right? Yes, I was wondering if it was normal, if you were keeping on the first uh, slide, or if it was, uh, I mean, I was not sure, so I was, uh, I was uh, looking forward to see if uh, you will move to the next slide or not. Okay, yep, I just ran into technical difficulties. Let me see if I can quickly bring the presentation. Um, hmm. This should be quick. Sorry for that. Unexpected situations happening. Oh. And just when you need them the most to be working. Uh -huh. Now we see PowerPoint. Yeah, but the regular PowerPoint, that should not be. Um, there you go. Oh, it works now. So we have pipelines. Uh, sorry for that. Um, quickly, we were getting into what is a pipeline. I gave you an introduction of all the things uh, that I have been doing about me. Sorry uh, that I skipped all this information, but uh, thank you for uh, your patience. So back to the topic. Uh, here's the agenda. What is a pipeline? We started to define it, uh, tubes where stuff flows and where we are pushing things, uh, process things in real life. In IT and computer systems, they are very similar. They are flows of information, steps, processes, uh, lots of things that can happen from a starting position, to call it in a way, and to an end state or desired outcome. Um, that's more or less. In this diagram, you can see um, how uh, it goes from stage to stage and different steps. Um, when 
processes are applied on each one of these steps. This diagram is a little bit uh, straightforward, mm, a little plain, because in real life, pipelines can be a little bit more complicated, as you can see here. We can have different flows, different steps, some uh, places where the pipeline dies, goes back to another step, triggers some other things. So these type of flows, in general, um, they really are a little bit more complicated. And they, in general, uh, speak of a process uh, in many uh, continuous integration platforms. I am going to define not only that concept, but a little bit further when, where you don't have a single, uh, to, call, to call it pipeline file, uh, defining these steps, because some of them can be stopped and started by another pipeline, another system, another solution, or entirely, uh, let's say, by crazy example, you start on Jenkins, it finishes some processes, and then it triggers another thing, could be Nasher, could be in Travis, so, Pipelines are not just that single file description, but the, uh, a general uh, concept that you can apply on testing and performance, of course. So, as I said, they have multiple flows that can happen from beginning to start. But another detail is that they can be parallel. When you start one, uh, another thing can start to run while one of the processes is running, and in the end, uh, probably when all of them finish, you can um, get them together and keep flowing in a single um, set of processes or steps. You can trigger multiple steps at the same time and go crazy with all this uh, as long as they are automated and keep flowing. Um, in, in, the, in these ones, the inputs and outputs on each one of the steps mattered a lot because uh, each subsequent step uh, might need those outputs or require to receive something as input. But as I mentioned, a key element is that they must always flow uh, until they reach their destination. Either destination, they can have multiple. Uh, like, as I said, they can go to another pipeline, just say like, yeah, I completed my task, I'm happy and ready to go, or I needed to trigger another one, uh, something went wrong, and I need to stop here, uh, report it. So there are multiple um, scenarios that we can implement in a pipeline. But let's, uh, now, that, now that we more or less define them, let's check what are the needs, what things does a pipeline need to keep rocking, to keep moving, um, or the key elements that we need to be careful when we are working with uh, these uh, pipelines. So the first is a flow. As I said, these pipelines should keep flowing until their end state. Uh, when they start, like, think of them as a stream, a river. They start at the top of the mountain and they go through different uh, ponds, uh, lakes, uh, dams, so, and they keep moving until hopefully they reach the ocean. That must be um, the last step. They must uh, have defined steps uh, to not to stop, to not to break. Uh, they have to be somewhat structured. And uh, as I said, every piece needs to keep the flow. Even if it's a dam, eventually we need to leave everything flowing. Same in uh, continuous integration pipelines or IT related. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the output and input is important on every step of the pipeline or in interconnections of these pipelines. As I, uh, in the example a moment ago, uh, a flow of water through a river uh, even if it stops at a dam, it can keep flowing at a smaller pace, can be converted, but there must be inputs and outputs and be passing this information along the steps. Um, there's, there's another trick uh, that these pipelines can use. The results, inputs or outputs can be placed elsewhere so that um, the next step can access it on that elsewhere uh, spot, such as uh, central repositories, uh, log, um, indexing systems, um, shared folders. There are multiple things that you can do to keep that information accessible or flowing through the pipeline. Uh, as a recommendation here for this, avoid using or integrating in your pipelines uh, sealed tools. Uh, what does this mean? Tools that um, the data that they generate while working, that this doesn't happen that much anymore. 
but these tools used to keep it for themselves, very uh, egotistical and say like mine, mine, nothing else, only my uh, environment, uh, ecosystem of solutions will be able to access this. Thankfully, this has been changing, That this has been evolving, but avoid these type of tools. They don't send, they don't receive, they are, I am the tool and you'd better use only me, me and only me. Uh, another recommendation is to not to stop. Every um, piece, step that you uh, develop, program, or implement in your pipeline should keep flowing. Uh, every piece must support this flow uh, of automation. In general, and a pipeline is an automation of many different steps. So, as I said, to maintain this flow until the end is key so that there's no human intervention that, uh, oh, again, this pipeline got blocked and I need to fix it, I need to go and check if it was a fish in the flow of the stream that got stuck. The deal is to keep things moving. Avoid any stopper in your pipelines, in your automated set of processes. Little, as little human intervention as possible, even if you uh, preferably to not to pay attention at all, like, yeah, I know it uh, finished and I don't even need to keep checking it. So, uh, as well, another element is to uh, think of all outcomes ahead, to look all the possible futures or all the possible streams or different scenarios that your pipeline can walk into. It's crucial that you pay attention to this because, uh, as I mentioned earlier, you don't want it to stop flowing. You need to be prepared for all possibilities and outcomes that your pipeline will face, like uh, to fail, to have an error, you need to be able to recover it, to keep flowing, uh, or to prepare different paths of action, like if everything goes well, I'll keep going straight forward. If I'm blocked, I need to automatically, I don't know, open the dam uh, doors so that the water starts flowing. And um, as well, as I mentioned earlier, these pipelines do not have a single uh, end state, a single outcome. They can have multiple different ones, and uh, some of these outcomes may make them interact with other tools, may uh, make them totally stop the pipeline, like that as an expected outcome, like this is the end flow. I stopped it because uh, my test didn't pass, it, it had bad performance, or many other possible situations. Uh, more on that in a moment. Um, the other characteristic is that these pipelines should have uh, different trigger mechanisms from the very start and on intermediate steps. Most of them are um, triggered or in the intermediate steps, they are programmed to go one after the other, after the other, after the other. But some others are triggered by events. As an example, when a developer checks in code, uh, this triggers uh, the pipeline to start the build, to trigger some other tests, to do some other subtasks that are triggered by this action of the developer. Not only um, events from the developer, it can be a failure in production, it can be some code that needs to be deleted, a uh, request for rollback, so many events can happen. Uh, and init initiate this uh, main thread that keeps pushing everything down the line. As I said, or dies or start other pipelines. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be the same process. Uh, the other type of uh, process that you can, the way that you can initiate your pipelines is through scheduled uh, jobs, where at a given interval of time, you will say every night at midnight, you will start this process that assures, that helps me something, that releases code. Any process that you would like to have automated, your pipeline will help you on in unscheduled um, cycles, to say it in a way. So those are um, some of the key elements of pipelines, how to implement them. Now let's get into the interesting part why most of us are here. Why do we want to integrate performance into our pipelines? Why do we want, do we want to mix those uh, two things um, that seem at the uh, beginning a little bit perennials one to the other? So the first reason is that pipelines are already here. They are already happening on multiple uh, software organizations or organizations that depend on software being created. And 
those pipelines that are already working, are already flowing and pushing code, um, doing actions, releases, doing rollbacks, backing up databases. There are many pipelines that do many different things. They are already running, they are already here, and most of them are not taking performance into account. They, it's not, we're not paying attention to if what is in the pipeline is performing well and we could, can allow it to move further. So right now anything goes through um, in terms of performance. Any good or bad performance keeps flowing and makes it uh, at times to production. Many times the end goal of a pipeline is to move code from dev until production. And this should happen constantly. And it's just letting everything uh, go through. Pipelines should take into account performance, performance assurance, quality, good performance, that things are uh, working well before letting them pass. Um, and another element is that uh, performance is a, in everything. The, in, in the pipeline, as I said, they are not being integrated or considered. They should be considered at every step of the pipelines. Uh, when many, and this is my general rant, when many people think of performance, they, their mind just goes right away to load testing. It's not just load tests, actually load tests, the true big ad load tests that we do to, for capacity planning are not very pipelineable, if that is a word, but we'll, we'll, we will get into that. In pipelines, we need to uh, check performance at different levels on every phase that we are moving, every tier, every phase in the project, and uh, every type, uh, such as unit integration, lo uh, load, as I mentioned, but uh, with a tweak, I'll, I'll get into that. Even uh, for production releases, so we need to uh, be careful with performance at every step. It's very, very good for us. Another uh, element is that performance uh, needs to be measured on those pipelines. We need to validate how it is going on each of those steps. Because um, these pipelines are not only um, releasing a process, m many times they are moving code uh, on different environments from the developer's machine to the stage um, machine, pre-prod, QA, until it finally makes it to production. So we need to make sure that on those different environments that our pipelines might be moving things, that performance is being checked. And uh, in case of we finding an issue, uh, a bad performer or something that is going haywire or that was degraded, we need to push it back. Hey, this river will have a U-turn and you're going back to where you began because something is bad in your water, to call it, uh, like the River, like river example. So uh, they're needed as well to generate some historic metrics, how it is doing the performance on every step. They help us to um, define uh, SLOs, uh, those levels. When we have these pipelines running continuously, flowing continuously, we get some metrics that we can compare from the past and to the present and hopefully use them in the future. Another uh, Thing, why we need to integrate it is that we want performance to be non-stop, to um, keep flowing, keep happening. And uh, as I mentioned, the traditional ways that uh, it was done just through big ass load tests or production loads, uh, automations, that um, generally could be um, a showstopper, not allow everything that you want in your pipeline to make it into the end. and in general, what you want to see is that things are performing well, not test performance, not low test only. Again, I'm gonna be coming back to this always, but I think this is a big problem. Uh, performance must be, performance testing assurance must be done different in the pipelines. We need to adapt it uh, for them to be able to coexist. And last, another element of performance is not of the performance of the things passing through the pipeline, but the performance of the pipeline itself. Another uh, key element is that we need to avoid low or non-performing tasks inside of our pipeline. Um, it should be able to flow easier, fast, nothing that stops uh, it. We need to measure the pipeline's performance and the things and the performance of the things inside of the pipeline. I know that might be a little bit uh, redundant and confusing, but there are different things. But um, just to make sure that we are clear on this, 
the pipeline must perform well, fast, and easy. Uh, slow. We don't want long processes slow. Uh, we'll get into that in a moment. So let's let's get now into specifics. Uh, how to apply uh, performance or how to do performance testing in pipelines? How can we implement it? What things can we do? This is a huge topic. Lots of possible recommendations, and they um, intersect with uh, Agile, Continuous, many other topics and where I won't be able to cover everything in this uh, presentation. So I will make um, the best effort to include the most important ones, the ones that I think are more relevant, and uh, to give you the, the biggest picture I can regarding those. So um, one element for the, the pipelines is and performance is that they must test at every step of the, of the pipeline, every little uh, task that is done inside of it, not only through the pipeline, but through environments. As I mentioned earlier, um, we need to measure performance at a developer's machine and a QA environment when it moves then to stage, when it moves pre-prod to prod, so that we can identify the differences. And maybe those environments are different sizes, different uh, capacities, a dev's machine definitely won't have as much power as production. And um, we want to be able to say when something is degrading in that same environment. As well, the type of uh, tests that we are going to include on each one of those levels are going to be different, like unit, service, web, load testing, organic um, steps. We may want to access through our pipeline organic metrics for those environments. So it's very important that we do performance everywhere. As I mentioned earlier, and again with my general rant, uh, load testing should be the last thing that you think of when you think of performance testing. Uh, you should avoid to do a big, um, uh, the general load uh, tests when you get the, an average of uh, utilization in production. You should try to avoid those traditional load scenarios. What you should do is to try to measure performance, as I said, everywhere on small chunks. And if you want to test for load concurrency and all those good old uh, practices, do it at a lower scale. Don't do it um, uh, with big, uh, realistic load scenarios. What you want to measure in your pipeline is while it goes through that it's doing well, that it's uh, performing not at volume. Again, uh, capacity planning um, is very difficult to be done in these environments because uh, it can stop the pipeline. It generally takes a while or you cannot do just like a pike uh, test to test it. You need to do it separately. In general, big performance uh, load tests, I would recommend them to be done separate from the pipeline. Everything else, try to integrate it at small scale. You can do load uh, with a few threads, a few users, a few iterations to figure out if it's performing under some sort of load. But again, these environments where things are going to be flowing through might be different sizes, smaller. So just to make sure that the performance is, do is doing well on those. Another uh, element is that is you should have performance measurements. Uh, as I mentioned, to know how things are performing at every step of the pipeline. And this is not through only performance automation. You should be able to absorb performance metrics from all possible sources. Uh, your pipeline might be benefited from organic tests uh, when, or organic utilization when the developer was using the application. You should have metrics for that. When the tester manual functional testing was happening, you should be gathering performance metrics for that and putting them in a um, way that the pipeline can access them and say, hmm, in the past, organically, we were getting this uh, utilization, uh, these performance metrics. When I'm running in this pipeline, now I'm getting this too. I'm comparing them, do they, do they flow? So you can uh, automate those type of measurements everywhere in the system. Uh, before production, and as well to keep some from production. You can uh, absorb everything from everywhere and compare. There's a, 
uh, people are jinxed a little bit against measuring too much or being overloaded with metrics, which can happen. And that's why it is recommended to do it before production. On production is when you have a landslide of metrics happening because all the users uh, supposedly are using the system at a, at a incredible um, volumes and paces and uh, utilizations. But before, you just have your testing tasks, which give you not too tiny pool of information to compare, but good enough to say the performance is good, the performance has degraded, uh, or to compare with other metrics. Uh, this is a new process that I just created, and I'm going to push it through my pipeline. I don't know what uh, SLO or SLA should be applicable. Well, compare it to the others that we have, and that might be a good point of reference. So measurements everywhere are super important. Uh, another key element, as I mentioned earlier, to see the possible futures, the paths that may happen, and direct your pipeline in different directions, depending on what happens with those performance metrics. As I said, if it's too bad, probably um, send it back. Uh, direct the flow with those metrics that you will get. If an SLO uh, on this pipeline is too high, too crazy, too different, from other processes or that same process that just received the change, you can push it back and say, you are not going to, uh, like Gandalf, you shall not pass and send it back. Not stopping the pipeline, the flow goes to you where, where you were expecting because of a performance metrics. And as well, if the performance metrics uh, look good, you can let it pass and keep uh, flowing until you get hopefully into production. A key element here is uh, that through these practices, you can focus not on fixed SLOs, but on percentages of deviation, because not everything in your system will have the, the same response time or the same SLO. You should not do one size fits all. There are processes that understandably can take longer, and some others that should be hyper instantaneous, super fast. So be careful with this and define them accordingly. Again, it's uh, useful to have uh, the percentages in, and deviations from an average uh, response in the metric. Another um, key element for the pipeline to keep flowing is that you need to cooperate with the world, uh, share it with everybody. Share any performance metric, automation, or process that uh, you need in your pipeline to be accessible by everyone. Uh, you can teach your developers some of those simple automations, key elements, um, unit test performance, uh, service level uh, automations, which are not that complicated and most developers will be able to pick up uh, pretty quick and enable everyone to access them, to update them, or, or version them, be careful that not you won't be losing uh, important things by everyone being able to access it, be diligent, but as well share it with everyone so that um, whoever makes a change that may break the flow of your pipeline, that same person can update that element, that performance automation, that check, that measurement, so that that same person can ensure that it keeps flowing so that they don't break the pipeline which is mostly the element where it becomes a slow, like I, I develop or change something, I don't care about what happened afterwards, is a problem of the performance tester. A little bit in line with what um, the guys in the previous presentations were talking, it is not a matter of re replacing the performer or just um, not doing our due diligence. As a performance engineer in our project, we need to be um, more or less aware of what things are happening with these automations. But we cannot keep up with doing all of them and doing all the coverage if sprint by sprint we keep adding changes and we keep doing things. So that's why it is very important. Um, share it as possible that there are not super specific tools or that all the team has the tools needed to update and maintain uh, these codes so that they keep flowing through the pipeline. And that's the next uh, step, keep them up to date. As, um, a little bit redundant because it's connected, but whoever changes something should do something. And don't push it only to the performance uh, guy. Um, whoever changed it, in general, is the best person to update the automation because they know what they changed, they know what happened in the system. 
some developers are, it compiles, I don't know why or how, but it's working and I, I don't want to touch it. That should not be the case. We should know what we just developed, why we just changed, and how it can impact the automations that we have for it, the measurements, the metrics, how it can change. And we should, even as a requirement to be able to check in the code, we should be checking um, that uh, we didn't break automations, pipelines, or any of the flows uh, inside of them. That should be requested as part of the checking process. Uh, super important and key for the pipeline to not work, to break or stop working. The next is that uh, all the metrics for performance should be visible everywhere. Uh, metrics that are generated should be um, centralized and accessible by everyone, everything, and everywhere in our project, whatever is relevant. We don't want any security risks, but these performance metrics should be centralized. Uh, maybe we can generate dashboards for the people to access and see if uh, they are doing well. This helps um, building some trust and, hey, I don't know where is uh, the performance tester Amigo, but I can check myself how are the dashboards, how is the performance of the pipeline, of the things flowing through the pipeline. And as well, this information, these measurements of uh, performance metrics should be accessible not only by people, but by things by tools, by other pipelines, by other processes that might require to take decisions based on those metrics. So it's uh, super important that the performance metrics are stored in a location that anything can access it. Well, who should access it can access it. And uh, that is not like a black box, like well, what is the performance of this thing? I don't know, ask the IT people, ask um, the system support, ask the performance guy. No, everyone should have access to that, stay with it, and to work with it. Uh, a last little element with that is that the storage for this metric should be somewhat smart. We cannot expect to save it all because we need it also to perform. It's a little bit redundant, but just keep the latest metrics. The most important ones, we don't need, like, two-year-old performance metrics, start to discard them or uh, sort them in a way that you quickly, right away, can see the results, see the performance, see the metrics, see those dashboards. Um, because otherwise, things will start to get slow. And this gets us to the next point. Uh, they should be fast. Um, any automations, uh, performance automations, or metrics processes that you put in the pipeline should not stop it, at least not for too long. Uh, anything regarding performance, load test, measurements, metrics, instrumentation should move quick through the pipeline. Uh, even if it's a load test, as I mentioned, big, general, average uh, production load tests should not happen. They take too long. But if you do smaller, uh, small, small load tests, you can move through the pipeline quickly. Just do for two minutes a five thread uh, quick iteration on this process, just to make sure that it behaves well under a certain um, given volume of load. Um, as well, the measurements, everything should be flowing fast. That's why we generally try to not to include that many end-to-end uh, -end, uh, UI front-end tests, or we try if we have to test um, somewhat the performance, the load, or anything on the front end, just on features, just on single widgets, elements in your solution, not the whole flow that will lock your pipeline for a long period of time and you'll be waiting for it to finish. Uh, and last, you should include just relevant steps. I'm going to test everything in my pipeline. No, just focus on what is affected on those steps or the flow that you are trying to define. If you are not changing all the code is meaningless if you do a full regression suite uh, execution in that pipeline. You don't want to be sitting there for a few days, hours. Hopefully, everything flows super quick so that that pipeline can hopefully continuously or quickly reach production. And another uh, element, speaking of uh, uh, speed, you can schedule through another pipeline a continuous execution um, that can be gathering information so that other pipelines can use that information. 
So as you can see, one single pipeline feeding many others so that they can come and check uh, what is and the, the solution, what is the performance. This is known as synthetic automations where you trigger some elements and get more or less a heartbeat of your solution. Um, the metrics, how it is doing every five minutes, you check, you check, you check. And from what I recommended earlier, put the results in a centralized location so that the other pipelines can access easily that information. Uh, that uh, as well can serve as reference for the SLOs of other processes. So you can, uh, as I said, this new pipeline can go and check what is the result from the heartbeat or continuous uh, performance measurement, to call it in a way, and say this new one, do they match? Do, are they not that different? Okay, you can go, or whoa, whoa, no, 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 you're going back, developer, something's happening, create a Jira ticket, create uh, a defect, push back the code, don't let the branch pass, many actions that can be done with that. Um, continuous uh, review. The next one is to have uh, different perfinity stones, performance stones that do different things. In Avengers, you had the power, space, all uh, reality, different stones that did different things. Performance automation can also test different aspects of performance. On each one of the steps, you should be testing different type of things. As an example, when the developer just checks in code, this should trigger a pipeline that um, checks a single thread of your process. Or how about just five threads, just to measure those differences. And probably this test will run a, at a code level, not as a unit, maybe even a unit test, or at a service level. You may need different type of tests, different types of executions, and depending on the pipeline as well, if uh, one is to push until production, well, you need to measure different things, some of those slightly larger uh, low tests inside of it, or just do some good comparison with historical records. If uh, this other pipeline is just pushing new code, you just need to set up a new uh, SLO and do a different type of measurement. Or if it is just checking um, manual tests that are happening, you should do a different, uh, it's not an automated performance, as you just use measurements as uh, gateways and you define the solution from there. So there's no single type of performance test, not only low tests again, and depending on the type of the pipeline and the step that it's included in, you need to do different, uh, use a different stone. Another uh, element is to divide the type of tests depending on where uh, they are and what you need. As I said, if the pipeline is just working in between development and test environment or stage environment, it's a different type of test that you need to run than if it's going right into production or if it's even if it's pushing back code that failed, probably you can have a pipeline that repeats some tests to make sure like, yeah, we have problems, we definitely need to push this back. And even the metrics and the SLOs, as I said, in dev environment, you may be okay if the response time with something that has to be incredibly fast, this is slightly slow, you may be okay with that. As long as there's no big deviation, your SLO might be different from what you had in production, the beefiest, largest environment that you have. So it, it must be applied everywhere, but the things that you do are going to be different depending on where what and why you are running that pipeline. Some of the last elements is data. Do you get got data like the milk? Um, data needs to be automated as well for some of these processes. Right before you trigger your pipeline, you should make sure that you have data for that process to complete successfully if it needs it. So um, if there's no data available or there's a dependency, that might stop the pipeline. So what you can do, you can have a data generation process before the pipeline starts, start it, and after it, maybe it itself triggers a pipeline after it finishes, or after you are sure that it finished, you just go and start a pipeline or is it scheduled to start afterwards. As well, you can make it inside of the pipeline that step one, generate me all the data that I need to keep everything flowing. Or 
if the pipeline burns data that was already there, at the end it knows it burned the data, at the very last step, it can trigger a process that repopulates that data. So at the beginning, in the pipeline, after the pipeline, you need to make sure, and it will be different depending on what is the design or the implementation that you want to do. Um, the data must be available for that pipeline to not stop, to not break, that everything flows automatically. Now, um, the, 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 the um, performance processes, measurements, automations, everything, should be invocable, should be able to be called up through a service call, through a command line request, easy ways. Uh, old uh, performance automation tools used to need the SDK, the platform where you were creating everything to be able to be invoked, or were not that transparent when you needed to remotely request them to start. There was no engine, there was no uh, service tier, so you could uh, face multiple problems, and if the pipeline cannot initiate it, there's going to be a problem. It will start stop. So focus on tools that can be um, invoked without having the tool running on itself through multiple different uh, processes and mechanics, to call it in a way. It should be parameterizable as well. It should be able to receive parameters and even allow you to do distributed load tests from a single request or have mechanisms to do distributed executions through EC mechanisms. Um, last but not least, it should indicate you what is the status of that execution. What if a next, the next pipeline or the next iteration of the same pipeline starts a little bit uh, sooner before this process finishes? So you need to have as well a way to check that, hey, uh, you're not running, so I'm going to start you. Oh, you're running, uh, then I'm going to wait a little bit or not to run you at all. Multiple different things that you can do, but you need to take it into account. Another element is that those processes should communicate, should have clear outputs so that the next step can work to them or uh, that their responses are understandable and open. Very similar to what I said, put the results in a central uh, location or to have easy outputs, uh, output codes, numbers, elements that uh, through standard channels, the next um, step on the pipeline can pick up and keep working to them. They should be as well as portable, uh, be able to share them so that um, it keeps flowing. The next step can pick it up, and your run was good, I can keep working with it. And well, there are many, many other recommendations to integrate performance processes in your uh, pipelines, but, and many, many more. But I'm sure that Henrik, by now, is a little bit tired. He must be wanting to sleep. I don't want to keep you all for that long and step into any other pe person's time. So to help Henrik to go to bed quickly, I'm going to stop it here. I'm going to thank you all for enduring here with me, uh, this little box that I had with my presentation. And um, I'm ready for some questions. Hello. Yes. So thank you, thank you, Leandro. I was not sleeping. I was awake, first of all. So, uh, that snorting was just a sound effect. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the presentation. Uh, I mean, you 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 turn it always. Uh, you turn it always. Uh, topics very fun and very easy to understand. Um, so it's very uh, helpful for anyone who wants to build pipelines or automate things. Makes complete sense. I'm going to mute him. <laughs> so Mark is uh, practicing. I see that. Um, so probably uh, if we have time, I will probably let him. Uh, I mean, if he's ready for that, we can make a 15 minutes break with uh, Mark playing some songs. That will be fun. Um, so I see that Goranka is currently connected, but uh, I am. Her... I am here. Um, the only question that I have is: Have you ever seen all of this implemented somewhere and working for 
let's say, an extended period of time, um, a year or longer? No, that, that's a very good question. Like all the elements, uh, all the recommendations that I did, that I gave uh, on themselves, each one is a decent challenge. So having everything together, stable or running, uh, we have had some that uh, for long periods of time have been working some elements of them, but putting everything together uh, certainly requires a big cultural change. Be careful. Everyone needs to be in tune. So um, that's a good point. It's not easy to integrate all what I recommended, but uh, start little by little. I have seen organizations that have many of those and even more, not everything, but requires lots of work, lots of diligent people, and uh, lots of good practices towards that. That's a very good question. You caught me. <laughs> oh, that's okay. Thank you very much. Thank but you. As I, well. think, I think the uh, putting the the, the easy uh, load testing or component level, unit level, whatever we could name it, uh, is pretty much easier to implement uh, because it's you usually you don't have much. Uh, day-to-day -day update to, to to maintain and manage your test cases and so on so that that could uh, easier and what i have more trouble to see is the integration part uh, because as soon as you integrate then yeah suddenly complexity comes in the picture and uh, usually people say um, yeah let's keep that um <laughs> but i think I think integration is really important, uh, I mean, from my perspective. But yeah, uh, if we find a way of uh, making this easier and, I don't know, uh, like a secret sauce or a secret ingredients that makes the life easier for everyone, I think it will be much more faster and easier to implement in the integration. I don't think it's a single ingredient. It's a big recipe. All of the ingredients are mystical and kind of hard to uh, get. Get, but um, each one of them that you add, your uh, performance recipe will taste better. So, uh, as many as you can integrate, Hendrik, with uh, I, I agree with you as well. And cultural challenges, I would say, um, might be the most difficult to include because, uh, especially, many of these things depend on the, the cooperation of most of the team and for them to be knowledgeable in performance topics, in automation topics. And it's not that you are going to teach them all everything performance. So it's it's a pull and push, uh, an interesting battle. But I, I, as closer you can get to the goal of having them all, the better the experience will be. But there was a, a pretty interesting uh, um, presentation done uh, later on today by uh, Arthur. Uh, Limus, who was uh, uh, not covering on how to, but more on on how you should organize, uh, because uh, performance, I mean, uh, performance um, central of excellence uh, is uh, is not compatible anymore. But still, you you still need a sort of a skill centers, or I don't know how to name that, uh, to uh, help teams to train, to provide tooling, to provide uh, methodology. I think uh, what you what you exposed. I think it's a mix of uh, culture, organization. Uh, yeah, the the overall organ company needs to be, or the the, I say the founder or the CEO or the whatever the the the, the managers needs to uh, to be uh, actively pushing for that. Otherwise, I think uh, it's very difficult to make it happen. Everyone needs to be involved, and as I said, it's. Hey, even uh, in some organizations where we try to implement those all those steps, it's a cultural impact, it's not an impact. It's like a blast that uh, many ones will fight and cry and uh, bleed and tears and everything. So it, it requires cooperation from everywhere, like not only um, C-level, higher managers, blah, but even at the bottom, like. Um, in my experience, when you explain it well to a CEO, a product lead, they, if they understand it, they are on board and they uh, support you. 
but at times the rest of the team is the ones who like, um, why, why are you expecting me to learn performance? And they are like, just a little bit, please, please, please. And I don't, I don't meet, what? I mean, you're already creating uh, service requests, service calls, um, HTTP requests that most of the tools have. Can you just integrate it and triggering your um, request? Unit tests, can we use them? You already create them, can we measure them? Just add a start and stop timer on some of them. It's gonna take so long, it's gonna be so difficult. Just as, as two lines of code in every uh, unit test. It's, it's not that complicated, uh, but again, it's cultural. It's making uh, your toddler wash their teeth every night and sometimes they don't want to. <laughs> That's true. Um, Mon Caronca, do you have any other questions for, for Alejandro? Uh, no questions on my end. Mark, do you have any questions for Leandro? No, not really. I mean, I like Leandro. What can I say? <laughs> uh, that's, that's not a question, but I appreciate it. <laughs> I was on dog duty, and I was trapped in a rock and roll party. So, you know, what can I say? <laughs> well, I I dig it. Um, I, I, I dig the concepts over all the different things that you've covered from from pipelines to to this definition of uh, insights on what a pipeline is and how you change your approach to general load testing, specific load testing, that kind of stuff. Um, the one question I have is, I know you're you're working in, in some interesting, not just in, I think it was a safe project, one of the big agile projects, um, is in terms of adopting these practices. Are these things, Leander, that you're applying right now in kind of the gig you're working on or, or, or recently working in? Yeah, yeah, where many of those, uh, and that's uh, from the questions why I can share the pain and experience. We are working uh, through some of them. The teams are not truly agile, like they, they, they don't have uh, great pipelines in their implementation. They release to production every six months, things like that. But even yeah. though I think many of these practices should have appeared even in waterfall days, like, um, bringing all oh, yeah. those steps from the very beginning. Uh, yeah. But that's where I can share, it's a real life story where some of those issues happen, culture, and even in the organization, we want that, the performance test, not the things that you're doing. That's performance test, what, uh, what are you talking about? Yeah, those yeah. when we need uh, 10,000 users. Oh, that's a load test, but uh, it, it, <laughs> your, your processes stuck without load. We should not be loading them. I mean, yeah. And uh, it's, it's an interesting experience. We have been uh, almost nine months now trying to <laughs> push that baby. Uh, it's yep. a long process. It's yeah. not easy. And uh, as Hendrik very well pointed, the whole organization has to be on board. They are not always. So yeah. do whatever you can. Yeah. Yeah. And try to help them understand that, you know, some of the definitions and terminology we use can trap our thinking in what a load test is or what load is instead of, you know, a single query from a single user across a thousand uh, shards jet across a hundred billion rows is a tremendous performance issue. Uh, it's a tremendous amount of load across a large system, but it's only one user. Interesting. Yeah, and, and that single user is probably running a thousand queries on itself and that's where like you need to have other performance SLOs thresholds that to say hey every new code that you implement should be doing uh, tops five calls to the database not not go crazy and or leave them inside of a loop or um, silly things that we keep finding destroy all your objects some of those best practices before yeah. you uh, check in code make sure that all of those things are happening no, 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 yeah. we just want low test. Oh, come on. <laughs> Don't waste my time. Let's do the little stuff. So nice job. I thought it was great. Thanks. Yeah. Great job, uh, uh, Leandro. Thanks again for being part of the PAC.